Algebra 1, number 5.3a, multiplying monomials. So I want you to remember a monomial consists of just one term without operation signs, okay? No addition, no subtraction, okay? All right, so this is multiplying monomials. A monomial is an expression that is either a number, a variable, or a product of numerals and variables with whole number exponents. So the exponent has to be a whole number, because did you know that exponents could be a fraction? Yeah. So in order to be a monomial, it has to have a whole number exponent. If the monomial is a number, we call it a constant. So these are monomials. Negative 6 and 4, those are constants because they're numbers. Then we've got 3x squared, that's a monomial. Negative 5pq, that's a monomial. 1 third, a to the fifth power, that's a monomial. Now remember we said the variables are whole numbers, see? So it can have a fraction coefficient because that's a whole number exponent, see? And 2a to the third power, b to the second power is a monomial. These all consist of one algebraic term, okay? These are not monomials. 1 divided by x, well, not only does it have an operation sign for division, but x could be anything. It could even be 2 with a half exponent. x to the 1 third power, that's not a whole number exponent, so that's not a monomial. a squared plus 3, there's an operation sign. There's two terms here. That's not a monomial. Monomial is only one term. x squared plus 2y minus 5. There's two operation signs here. There's three terms, so that's not a monomial. This is actually called a polynomial. Mono means one, and poly means many. So a monomial has one term, where a polynomial has many terms, okay? We can multiply two monomials by using the properties of rational numbers and the properties of exponents. We can multiply 3x by 4x. We group the 3 and the 4 together, and we group the x's together, and we get 12x squared, because remember, x and x makes x squared, right? Using the associative and commutative properties, we regroup and rearrange them. And we use the product rule for exponents to add the exponents together. Look at this one. It's a little more difficult. We've got 4x squared times negative x. Now remember, there's a negative 1 in front of that x, when variables are alone, there's actually an invisible one in front of there, isn't that? We learned that in seventh grade. So what we do is we group the four and the negative one together. Just as we're separating the number from the variable, like here, we separated the numbers from the variables, we're going to separate this negative one from the x. We're going to separate the four from the x squared. Together, the 4 times negative 1 is going to give us a negative 4. And now that this negative 1 is gone, we've got x times x, x squared times x, see? And there's like a little 1 up here on top of this x, isn't there? That's x to the first power. So that means we have x to the 2 plus 1. So simplified, we get negative 4x to the third power, see? We use the product rule of exponents to add the exponents together. All right, let's do an even harder one. We've got negative 5a to the second power, b to the fifth power, times 3ab to the third power. So we're going to use the associative property to regroup, the commutative property to rearrange. So we pull out all the numbers. We've got a negative 5 and a 3. We pull them out. We've got an a squared and an a. We pull them out by themselves. And we got the b to the fifth power and b to the third power, and we pull them out by themselves. Okay? So... Now, we do the negative 5 times 3. That's negative 15. This is a to the 2 plus 1. And this is b to the 5 plus 3. See? The product rule of exponents says we can add the exponents. When we simplify it, we get negative 15, a to the 3rd, b to the 8th. See that? Let's try an even harder one. Now we've got 6x squared times 2x to the 3rd power times negative x. Now we're multiplying three monomials together, okay? So we use the associative property to regroup and the commutative property to rearrange, and we put out all the numbers. We pull out the 6, the 2, and that invisible 1 that's in front of that at x, and we put them together. We separated that invisible negative 1 from the x. 
So now we've got an x squared, x to the third power, and an x that we can put together. 6 times 2 is 12, times negative 1 is negative 12. This is x to the 2 plus 3 plus 1. We get negative 12x to the 6th power. See? All right, let's try one last harder one. We've got negative 2a times 4a squared times negative a to the fourth. So before, our negative variable didn't have an exponent. Now it does. Okay, we're going to regroup, rearrange, and add the exponents. So let's regroup them. Let's put out all the numbers. We've got a negative 2, a 4, and a negative 1 right here, don't we? Our friend, the invisible 1. Okay, so we're going to pull him out with the negative 2 and the 4, and we're going to put them together. Then we're going to pull out the a, the a squared, and the a to the fourth power, and put them together. Now we've got negative 2 times 4. Well, that's negative 8. Negative 8 times a negative 1. Two negatives make a positive, so now we have a positive 8. Then we have a to the 1 plus 2 plus 4. That's a to the 7th. See? When you do it methodically, bit by bit, it's really not that hard. Okay? So remember, the product of two monomials will always make another monomial. Here we had three of them multiplied together, and we made this nice little monomial. We multiplied these three together and made one monomial. We made, multiplied this big, huge one with this one, and we got one big monomial. See that? All right. We're going to move on to 5.3b, and we're going to talk about dividing monomials. Okay? I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you there. Don't forget to check the description to see if there's any helpful video links in there for you. Okay? Here's my little sneezy dog, Bitsy. Say hi, Bitsy. Yeah.